Hey everybody, it's Jen Kramer, and I am super excited about the new custom element option that was just added to Webflow in the last day or so. There are some really cool things you can do with this custom element option, and one of the things I wanted to talk you through is an element you may not be familiar with. Now, of course, HTML elements are not needed in order to work with Webflow, but they are not terribly difficult in the spectrum of things you can learn for programming. Uh, they're not har terribly hard to learn. And the best place to get information on them if you're just looking to look up some information is from MDN. And this will tell you all about the 130 or so HTML elements we have available to us. The one I'm excited about is the details element, which makes something that's kind of like an accordion panel. and. So the first thing you have to know is what the HTML element is and how you configure it so that you can replicate that process in Webflow. So here inside of our documentation, I'll put a link to this in the description below. It'll show you that you need two elements in order to make this work. One is the details element, which is going to go all the way around this, kind of like a big div or big box in Webflow. And then you have a summary element. And as you see here, I've changed the text on this. So it says Webflow rocks. And you can click it and uh, whatever is underneath here is going to show underneath. Uh, and that could be, that could be just a simple paragraph or a few words, uh, some kind of a, a little text block. It could also be uh, something from a collection you could have showing up inside of there as well. Uh, here inside of MDN, you are able to change the text. So let me just show you what happens if we leave out the summary element or the summary element has no text associated with it. Uh, let's see if I can actually get rid of the whole element. There we go. So you could have just details by itself. It would show up by default with the arrow and the word details. It's still clickable and so forth, but it's way prettier if you actually have that summary element as well, which will allow you to customize what the word is. Otherwise the word details will show up by default. Okay. So now that we know what it is that we're doing, let's build it here inside of Webflow. So I've set up a page here. I've got a section, I've got a container in place. Obviously you can put this in anywhere that you would want to do uh, with Webflow normally. So I am just going to add it right here to keep my example simple. We go to our add panel here. I'm going to scroll down to the new custom element option, which is under advanced. It's way down near the bottom. It's where all the good stuff is. And we're going to click on that to add it. And let me make sure it goes into my container, which it did not. All right, so now it's, now it's inside my container and you'll see it says just div by default. That's because that's what they give you by default. It's just a regular old div block. If you switch over to your settings option with that div selected, you'll see that we have the option of making changes here. Now Webflow is not gonna check you on whether you've got your code right over here. They assume that you know something about this code in order to make this work. So I am going to set this to the details element, just like that. And not a whole lot has changed here. Uh, and this is the way that it looks by default. So now inside of details, let's start adding some elements. I'm gonna add another custom element inside of details. That would be that summary option that we have. So there that is, the div element. Uh, by default, we're gonna change that to summary. Summary, enter. And so this is going to give you that uh, summary attribute. Notice that the word details and that arrow went away. I'm gonna talk about why in just a moment, but the summary is in place now and we can add some text. So Webflow rocks, okay? And this is the unusual thing about the custom element option here in Webflow. You have to uh, put in your text down here inside of your settings. You can't just type it in here as you would do with some of the other Webflow elements. All right, and then also here inside of details, I'll make sure that I have that selected. Let's add a paragraph. And so that is a paragraph of blah, blah. And so now what's gonna happen is as you take a look at this, you only see the words Webflow rocks. You don't see your summary or your paragraph. And if you put this in preview mode, 
you will find that nothing happens. So I can click on this all day long and nothing will happen. That is because the preview option here inside of Webflow is not working uh, for this details element. You're actually going to have to publish this in order to see it in action. So let us publish this page here. Awesome. And then let me take a look at this in a new tab. And now when I click on it, you can see that it is in fact working, okay? Not a whole lot of styling going on, I'm going to get there, um, but uh, we have something that's here by default. And it's missing all of its context. How do we know that this is clickable? How do we know that this thing is going to swing down? We're missing all of that interesting context. So this comes into the second point of MDN, which is you can use this as a resource to read what's going on and uh, figure out what's going on wrong, perhaps with what's going on inside of your Webflow site. So one of the things that it says here in the summary element, a few things. So first of all, it can only be a first child of a details element. What that means is here inside of your Webflow, you want to have your details element and your summary element following immediately after inside of that details element. Don't put it elsewhere. If we put our paragraph first, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but if you put your paragraph first, this may cause problems. And again, Webflow may not render this correctly in the way that it looks. So make sure that your summary element comes first. Then uh, the second thing is here under default style. The default style for the summary element includes display, colon, list item. If you don't know what that is, that is CSS. Anytime you see a thing, colon, another thing, that is a CSS declaration. And so it means that we need to have something, a uh, type of list item in our display. Okay, well here inside of Webflow, uh, you might say, okay, here's the summary. Let's go to our display panel. That is in fact what is going on here. But you'll see that we have the option, of course, for flex, for grid, for inline block, for inline, or don't show it. We don't have an option for a list style type. So how do we get around that particular problem? Well, this is where, uh, once again, we can continue on here with our attributes as associated uh, with this custom tag. So make sure you have your summary element selected and down here where it says attributes, we're gonna click the plus sign and we're going to give this a name. We're gonna give it a name of style. So what this is going to do is it's going to give us an inline attribute associated with the summary element. And we are going to put in the value exactly as you saw it on that MDN web page, which is display colon list hyphen item semicolon. So you want to make sure that this code is correct, otherwise it's not going to work. You'll know that it's correct when you put it in and you suddenly see your arrow show up here again. So now when I publish my site and I refresh my page, now it says Webflow rocks and at least there's that arrow. When I click it, uh, our text becomes visible. All right, now, what if you want to have one that is open by default. Well, we can do that as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my details item here. I am going to copy control C and control or command V here on the keyboard. So now that I've got two of these and we're gonna say the second one is Webflow rocks uh, over here. Remember, we have to put in our text over here on the right-hand side, Webflow rocks harder. Okay, so now I have two of these. For the first one, uh, what I'm going to do now is add another attribute, and here we're going to add it to the details element. Again, here in our documentation, it says that we have attributes here in MDN, and there's one here called open. When you set it to open, that particular item will be open by default. So let us do that uh, inside of Webflow. In that very first item that I have set here, I'm going to add an attribute on the detail, not on the summary element, on the details element. I'm going to set its name to open. 
And this is a weird thing in HTML. Sometimes you can have just the name without a value associated with it. Webflow really wants a value. So it is legal to say open equals open. It's redundant, but it works. And that will set your details panel to be open by default. So again, if we publish this and then take a look, you will see that we have one details element that's open and one that's closed. Now, the last part of this process, just to show you what that looks like, there we go, Webflow rocks is open. And in fact, you can open and close it. Webflow rocks harder, uh, opens on click. So the last part of this is, how are we going to go about uh, styling these kinds of things? Because everything I've showed you so far is just getting the HTML in place and it's just kind of working by default. So let's add some CSS to this. And the best way to do that is going to be just as you always do. Let's take our details element and let's give it a style. And I'm going to call this details because I'm super creative that way. And we can give it a background color. I've set up some variables in advance. So let's set it up to be, uh, oh, I don't know, pale purple. Okay. And perhaps we want to give it a little bit of padding eventually here. Uh, but let's just start with that. I'm going to set my second one to have also have details. And then with my summary here, we can style that a little bit differently. We can give that a style selector. And again, you can call these whatever you want. You could call this, you know, George, if you wanted to call it George, and it would work just fine. This is just usual class making stuff here inside of Webflow. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give this a bit of padding. Let's say uh, one rem on the top one rem on the bottom, and let's say one rem on the left, one rem on the right. Maybe that's a little bit much on the top and the bottom. Let's go to a half a rem. And then let's give it some background color. And I have a lovely dark purple here. And we can set the text color to be white. There we go, all right. And if you want to round the corners, you can do that. So let's round the corners here as well. Let's say it's like 10 pixels rounded corners. Now for the inside part here, right now I have just a paragraph hanging out in space by itself. Um, summary, you're going to need to leave as its own element. No matter what you do with it, you want it hanging out there as its own element. But with the paragraphs, you could wrap these in a div block if you want. We could call that uh, detail block because that's what it is. We'll do this with the second one as well. Wrap that in a div block and we'll call it detail block. Okay. And here on my summary, we can give that class of summary. We'll bring those styles down here to Webflow Rocks Harder. All right. So now with my detail block, now I can add additional styling to this. So let's start by giving that a little bit of spacing. One rem on the top, one rem on the bottom. Let's say two rem on the left, two rem on the right. Does that line up okay? Yeah, it kind of looks like the W there and the lorem are are lined up or you could line it up with the arrow if you wanted completely up to you. Uh, continuing on with this detail block, we can also give it a nice border. So I am going to give it a border. Let's give it a three pixel solid dark purple border on all sides. And uh, this border here on this detail block, notice how the rounded corners are clashing here like this. Uh, there's a couple things we can do to fix that. One is we can go to our summary. We can give this a, a three pixel solid purple border as well. That's going to help it match and line up here a little bit better. The other thing that we could do here is on our detail block, 
Um, right now we have it set to display on all four sides. What we really want to change it to is to display uh, the border to display on uh, just three sides. And we can also round our corners. Let's see, let's go to our rounding our corners. Let's set it to 10. Let's change it to uh, maybe not here on top. We'll set that to zero. We'll set this one to zero. And here on the top, we're going to set this to zero for the style. There we go. Okay. And then the last thing to do here to sort of make these more connected, you'll see how we have a tiny little bit of a gap between the edge of the border and the edge of the summary here. One of the things that you can do to fix that problem here on the detail block is to take your margin up here on the top and let's call it like minus 15 pixels. That'll pull it up here in space a little bit, make that look nice and connected. We may wind up having to give this a little bit more space up here on the top in the padding. Okay, so now those are nicely connected. And then uh, I'm gonna give this a bit of three rem of uh, padding, or of uh, margin, excuse me, down here underneath to give us space in between these detail blocks. So now, once again, let me publish this on the page. Uh, so what I just walked you through there was some really fast styling here inside of Webflow. We assigned some background colors, some padding, some margin, and some borders. Uh, remember that margin can have negative numbers, which will pull things closer together. You can't have a negative number for padding, but you can for margin, and that will make things look a little bit more connected here in our design. So now when we go back to our web page and refresh it, uh, this looks much better. Notice that we can click this and it's uh, closed like that. We can click this next one and it's open, okay? Because I put that uh, gap on the details inside, all right, so this might be a bug that we need to go back and fix. I put that two or three rems of margin on my detail box here. So if we take a look here at the detail block, I put three rems of uh, margin on that. Let, let's uh, turn that off. We'll just reset it. Where I actually want to place that is on the detail element itself. So let's put three rems on the outside here itself, and that will give us that space which will stay uh, in place. Now the only downside to doing this is if you want to go through and what happens if you want to edit Webflow rocks harder and you want to actually put content here inside of its paragraph. You can't see it here inside of the Webflow interface in order to edit that. So what you would need to do here is for this specific details item, go into your settings you're going to need to set its attribute where open equals open. And now you can go in and do whatever it is that you want to do. Um, we're going to put in more paragraphs down here. Uh, maybe we want to add a, a heading of some kind. Let's put in a heading. Uh, apologies for the color. I was using this particular item for some other work. Uh, so there we go. Maybe, maybe you have a heading inside of it, that kind of thing that you can do here directly inside of this. And once you're done making those text edits here on the page, you're going to need to go back to your details item and then delete that attribute that says open equals open. That'll be the only way that you can edit the content inside of these details items. Uh, so then once you've uh, set this all up and you've published it to its various domains, you are all set and you will wind up having some interesting accordion panel types of things with just HTML and CSS that show up here inside of Webflow making use of the details and the summary HTML elements.